receive it this morning. Come on, let's give it unto the Lord. Come on, he's good to us. Hallelujah. Excited about being in the house of the Lord this morning. If we could understand that God is just, he's waiting on us. Come on, that, that, period. We ain't, we ain't waiting on him. Uh-uh. He's waiting on us. I'm excited for what the Holy Ghost is doing. And uh, I want to go to the book of Numbers. I got several places that I want to go. And I'm thankful this morning my bride is home with my daughter. And she's enjoying the grandbabies. And I said, you're having too much fun. Praise God. Boom, we shoot at the devil. Praise God. Praise, praise God. Numbers 30, um, uh, Numbers 13, verse 30. When you got it, say, I got it. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. We were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were we in their sight. Numbers 14 in verse 3. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? Numbers 14, verse 31. But your little ones, which you said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. I want to go to the book of Joshua. Chapter 1. In verse 2. And Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread, shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. I want to talk about something for just a little while of this morning. One generation wondered and one generation conquered. Come on, one generation wondered. And one generation conquered. Here is how we are going to conquer. We cannot take offense right into the things of God. Come on, that is how we are going to conquer. The very moment that uh, the very moment that we start taking offense right under this book, we done lost the battle. Come on, ha 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 ha. Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise. Come on, you you can be seated. Thank you. But I really want to talk about uh, the spirit of offense. And if we could understand that God is bringing us out of where we was. And I cannot get offended with God. The very moment that I get offended with God, I lose my miracle. I lose my blessing. And I lose my place in God. Come on. There are times that we've got to realize that God is going, look, it's time for you to conquer. You have wandered long enough. Come on. It's time to come out of your stupor. It's time to make up your mind. You're going to walk right into the power of God. You're going to walk right on into the things of God. But I cannot take offense. Right, right unto the word of God. How does taking an offense happen? What actually motivates this take an offense or feeling offended often involves an experience of negative emotions caused by word or an action which is conflict, what we conflict in what we believe or what we can't control. They seen the land. They knew it was plenteous. They knew there was bread there. They knew there was houses that they didn't build. But in order to obtain it, God is not going to do everything for you. 
Some things you got to get up, you got to dress up, you got to show up, you got to make up your mind. You're not going to stay, stay where you are. Come on. Whatever it takes to get there. Our judgments are formed by our values and beliefs and they become a yardstick against which we evaluate others. But if we are offended, our judgments are one-sided with hurt and frustration of offense. Come on, just stay with me a little while, okay? I'm going somewhere. The word offense is a violation or a breaking of social or moral rule. It is a transgression, a sin. Joshua 7 deals with the offense of Achan. He deals with the sin of Achan. We defend our character but nurture our offense. We defend ourselves, but nurture our hurts instead of exposing our hurts to God and going, God, I need to be healed. I need to be delivered, God. Hey, the enemy's coming, and he's going to rub that defense, and he's going to, hey, look, he's going to pour alcohol on an open wound. That is what an offense is, and that is what the adversary is doing. He is wanting to bring, hey, he's wanting to bring you down. He don't want you to have victory. He don't want you to have joy. Look, it's time that we conquer. It ain't time to wonder anymore. It ain't, hey, hey, we got a battle to win. We got a city to gain. Come on, there are drug addicts in this city. You got lost loved ones in this city. They need the Holy Ghost. Come on. Numbers 14 and 3, they, they were offended at God. Oh, hey, hey. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword? Once we start looking at the word and the power of the word and what God can do for us, but the very minute that we start looking at our wife and our kids going, hey, they're going to perish here. No, they ain't. That is up to you. If, hey, if there's any perishing, it's on your part. It is not on his part. He told you to go forward. Go back and look at what he told Moses. He he said, hey, you, uh, you tell my people to go forward. I know the Red Sea's there. I've got to make the step. He's going to part the sea. But I cannot get offended with God. Number 6 and verse 41. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Ooh. I can see your problem and I can see what's wrong with you but I'm not willing to deal with me. In water, face answer us to face. In the mirror, a face is going to answer to face. What am I seeing in uh, in the mirror that is causing me to miss the things of God? What am I looking at in the mirror that is causing me to hold back upon the things of God? Who am I offended with? Who am I mad at? Come on, what is going wrong in my life? Why is the blessing being cut off? Why am I not being healed? Why am I still going in circles? I've got to ask myself, what's going on in my life? John 1 and verse 29, the next day John see Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. And that word sin is offense. He taketh away the offense of the world. He nailed it to a tree. Pray, prayed for an individual one night. Said, if you will forgive them, God will heal you. They bowed up. 
They look, they just stop praising God. They wouldn't repent. Carry it home. You'll die in your sin. Come on. I've got to lay down the offense. What is going wrong in my life? Who am I mad at? Hey, and if I'm mad at the man of God, guess what? I'm mad at the wrong thing, honey. Go back and look at Balaam. The Bible says that he was riding his beast and he kept beating the donkey. You know why? Because the donkey could see the angel, but, but the man of God could not see the angel. How many times has your pastor said, don't go, don't go, but yet you are beating him going, I am going. I'm going to do my will. I'm going to do it my way. There is something that is called an offense that is causing us to miss the power and the joy of God. You are the only word that some people will ever see. We are epistles of known and read of all men. You are the only word that somebody is ever going to hear coming out, uh, coming out of your mouth. So, so is it bitter and is it offensive or is it praise or and joy? Whenever God is bringing us out, come on church, he's trying to set us free. When are we going to let go of the things of our adversary? It ain't worth carrying what I carried yesterday. In 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 3, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. No occasion of stumbling. Psalms 1, 119 and 165. Great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Now I've got to ask myself a question. When I am offending, what part of the law of God do I not love? That's it. Well, preacher, they, they, uh, they, they've done me wrong. Jesus has done you right. They took money from me. Hey, you can make more money. You got one soul. Come on, you got one soul. You may never get another chance. I gotta have peace. Well, the man of God preaches the way I don't like it. Good. Maybe God is trying to get you to see you. Come on. I've got to be, hey, I've got to be a reflection of him. He is a reflection of him. He is a reflection of him. Come on. He is trying to get you to see you. Come on. Somewhere I've got to lay down this, this, this offense. I've got to conquer some land. Come on. we got to take the promises of God. We want the power of God. We want it our way. You're not going to get it your way, honey. This ain't Burger King. You ain't Chick Fil A. Praise God. In the Amplified, it says, "Those who love your law have great peace. Nothing makes them stumble." To have God's law is to have the very nature and essence of our life in right condition. Unwillingness to submit creates internal strife. Therefore, there is no peace to the wicked. 
If I'm not willing to say, hey, God, I'm going to do it your way. I'm going to walk it your way. I'm going to talk it your way. I'm going to pray it your way. We all have quirks. I'm, I'm, I'm left-handed. So, some folks is right-handed. Oh, I'm sorry. In order to be in this clique, you got to eat chicken with the right hand. We create cliques and we create clubs so we are able to hide our sin. Come on. Because we are wanting to be all right right in the eyes of our brother. I'm sorry. That ain't going to get it. There ain't going to be no clique. There ain't going to be no club in heaven. Come on. It's going to be those who have paid a price, who have made it. Come on. Who has laid down the offense. You know what it takes to live for God? A hard head and a thick skin. Well, they have talked about me. Let me, tell, uh, let me tell you something. I've been talked about so much. I've got so many teeth marks on my body. Just pick a place and bite. It don't matter anymore. I want to please God. Come on, I want to worship him. I want to be in the presence of, hey, I want to be in the presence of Jesus. It don't matter what, what we've been through. Hey, heaven will be worth everything. Well, they've done me wrong. So what? They have talked about me. Oh, you ain't talked about nobody? Um, let's put this shoe on your foot. I talked to a man yesterday, and he said, Brother Phillips, I said, hey, you want to wear, hey, wear my shoes a little while? He said, no. I'll let you put them on. No. We want the power of God. We want the glory of God. We want the blessings of God. But we want it our way. Because we take an offense. Luke 17 and 1. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible. I mean, excuse me, it is possible, I mean, impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. And that word offense is a scandalon, meaning where we get the word scandal. The Greek word, scandalon, is a trap spring, a stumbling block, the trigger of a trap. The thing that entraps you into error. The offense. What are we offended at? What part of his law do I not love? I know people right now that has been living for God for 50 years and they got hurt 30 years ago and now not only them but their children are carrying the same bitterness. I can't get away from this this morning. Wednesday night, we got through service. I went home and I got cleaned up and I laid down. And I said, God, what, why is this gnawing in my spirit? And he said, look. And I began to look, and this is what the Holy Ghost said. There is an individual. I can see the road. There is a fence on both sides of the road. There is a curve right at the end of that road. And if you're not going to repent, there is a man with a badge that is going to pronounce your death. You better hear this preacher this morning. When God gives us a space and a time, when God allows the 
time to come to a close. The only thing that is going to matter is what we've done for God. Come on. It don't matter what kind of success that you've got in this world. It don't matter what kind of stat status quo that, that you are in the church. Hey, are we telling somebody about Jesus? Come on. Are, hey, are we reaching for those who are lost? Are, hey, are we reaching for those who are looking for something from God? Couldn't get away from it, a Pastor Rankin. And I said, God, what are you saying? He said, the pastor will remember the word because the Holy Ghost spoke the same thing in his daddy's church. He give him a space and he give him a time and it's over. You remember Dwayne Sims that come here? It was his brother. What are we offended at? Are we offended at being separate from God? I mean, from the things of the world? How are we going to have a father if we don't be separate? We can shout, we can boogaloo, we can carry on, but when the rubber meets the road, where do I stand with God? What am I carrying in my heart? What am I carrying in my spirit? What is going on in my mind? So the Holy Ghost has kept you. He has kept you from leaving this world not, not once, sir, but twice. I don't know you and you don't know me, okay, but I know what I see in the Holy Ghost. And, sir, if you'll let God, he will pull a weight off your shoulders that will blow your mind. Come on. Come on, folks. Somewhere we've got, hey, why am I offended at God? They become offended and they wander in the wilderness. Satisfied with manna when God was wanting to give them grapes. Jesus broke the fish and the bread to satisfy a temporal need. But they missed seeing the eternal because the only thing that they could taste was the temporal. When I become offended, I am tasting the temporal, but I'm missing the eternal. Who has done you wrong? Forgive them. Preacher, you don't understand. They have, hey, it no matter what they stole from you. Amalekai 1 and 8. And if you offer the blind for, uh, for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, it, it, is it not evil? Uh, uh, offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee? Or accept, accept thy persons, saith the Lord of hosts. An offended person gives God his second best. He never gives God his best. He never gives God the very thing that is holding him back. He never gives God the very thing that he likes. That is why the rich young ruler, he had no name because his name was not written down in the Lamb's book of life. Why? Hey, there are those that has no name. An offense brings us to a place of thoughts of revenge. I'm going to hurt them because they've hurt me. Instead of going, I'm going to love them. I'm going to love the offense 
out of them. I'm going to love everything out of them that is causing them to miss God. We've had a great revival right until now. Because some of us here, we are carrying things. We are carrying weights, and you got to open your heart. Lord, here am I. When the Lord spoke to Isaiah, and he said, who shall I send? And he said, here am I, send me. He had to open his heart and say, Lord, you, you check me and make sure that there is nothing in me. And the fence stops the flow of God. A fence keeps us out of the enemy's territory. You know why? Because the enemy comes in and he's able to take the offense and, and torment us with it. Instead of coming into repentance and realizing there is something greater than what I've been carrying. In order to walk with God, I've got to let go of what was. Once I offend him, he's gone. He's gone. Come on, he's gone. If I offend him with my words, he's gone. There was a pastor that preached for this man, and and uh, he was uh, this this older gentleman was, uh, was a pastor, and 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 he was a horse trader, and he traded guns and knives and horses and dogs, and I mean, really, he was. I I, I know the pastor. He's been passed on for many years. And he went to preach for his, uh, for his friend, and he said, Brother Frazier, I really want you to pray for my boy. And they was out there right around the barn, and, 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 and they was talking about the horses. And so that night, they were sitting around the uh, dinner table before church, and, and he said, Brother Frazier, he said, yes, sir. He said, you know, you can lead, uh, lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. That, uh, that night, that boy got the Holy Ghost, and that pastor look, uh, looked at Brother Frazier. He said, what did you do? He said, I poured the salt to him. Our words have got to be seasoned with salt. If you don't think that salt won't make you thirsty, go and get your big old tablespoon of it. I want to watch you. When our speech has a season of salt, there is something that happens right in the ears, right of the individual. There is a thirst. There is something that, uh, that God is doing with his word. Why? He is reaching down. He's pulling out the hurt. He's pulling out the offense. He is pulling out everything that is keeping them from fully obeying the things of God. So why don't we just let go? Because it's easier to hold on to our past because we, we know what it was, but we don't know what the future is. Hello, sir, look at me. Yesterday's over. Yesterday's gone. Today's a brand new day. The weights and situations that has tried to snatch at you yesterday. And if you let the Holy Ghost there, he will cut this off and it won't bother you no more. Come on. The reason why that we get offended, it is because that there is something in the word of God. It is poking something in my spirit that I'm not willing to let go of.
And now I become offended. Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? See, I can't even trust my own heart. I can't even trust my own thinking. When I am offended, my words, come on, I can't trust my own words. I can't trust my own actions. Do I love the law of God or do I not love the law of God? was preaching one night and there was an individual right on after service said, preacher, I said, yes, sir. He said, I will never come back to the house of God. I said, okay, that's fine. And he looked at me like, you don't care about me? I thought, oh yeah, you'll be back. And that, uh, next service, he's back. Next service, he got the Holy Ghost. So what is inside of us? What is inside of us? What, what makes you tick? What makes you run? What, what makes your thoughts do the way uh, do, do you the way that they do? Stretched out, getting ready to rest. I don't know how God deals with you, okay, but this is how he deals with me. I was laying there resting in this is what the Holy Ghost said. How about pray for them? Yes, sir. And I begin to hear their thoughts and the things that they're dealing with in their mind. And they're many, many, many hours away. Well, preacher, it's just too hard. When we stand before God, there's going to be men like Stephen that preach one sermon and they stone him. I wanted the desires of my flesh greater than I wanted the things of God. Luke 6 and verse 45, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringing forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringing forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I'm trying to hurry, okay? If we can understand that God Come on, that God. He wants to talk to you more than you want to talk to him. You know why? Because he wants that relationship with you. Could it be that the fig tree that, G, that Jesus cursed in, in Mark the 11th chapter, could it be that, uh, that that fig tree because the scripture says that it was not yet time for figs, but why did it have a leaf? Because a fig tree is the only tree that bears fruit for it does a leaf. And so Jesus was looking for relationship. He was looking for fellowship. But all he found was a show, but on the inside was an offense. Where are you with God? Kadesh Barnea was a crossroads for Israel. Are you in a crossroads? Do I march beyond the offense or do I keep wandering in the same wilderness? Come on, I'm hearing some self-righteous things going, well, preacher, I'm okay, really? It's tight, but it's right. I 
Isaiah 26 and 3. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. My mind cannot be in, per, in perfect peace when there is an offense. There is a turmoil that is dragging me down. Please don't cut me off. Come on, somebody's already cut me off. Understand this preacher. There's a road. There is a road. I... Uh, First Chronicles 28 and verse 3. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build a house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war and hast shed blood. David didn't get offended here. You know what he did? He shifted it everything to Solomon. I'm going to lay up because he said, You know what? I may not get to do it, but I'm going to invest in him. There are generational curses that is that must, it is imperative that it's broken right by you. Come on. There were some things that I, uh, 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 that I had to break. I had to break some generational curses. I deal with things that, uh, that my kids will never deal with. You know why? Because I was willing, God. I am willing to stand there, Lord. I am willing to take the brunt in, God. I don't want my children to have to deal with this, God. I will invest in them. Come on. I will invest in their ministry. I will invest in everything that they're doing for God. Come on, church. Some where we've got to get beyond our offense and realize that God, is, hey, hey, he's pulling us up higher. I've got to let go right of my yesterday. An offense will keep you from being healed. An offense will stop the miraculous. If the enemy can get you offended, then he don't have to fight you. He just stirs up the offense. My dad was a decent mechanic. He was one of the most calm, level-headed men He could be furious, ready to rip your head off, and you would never know it. We knew it. My brother Tony, same way. You, you take a man that will not get mad, he'll beat your head off. Because he knows how to hold his calm. See, the enemy knows how to hold his calm. Even though you are coming against his kingdom with, uh, with the word of God, he is waiting on you to make yourself vulnerable because once he sees the offense, he's going to take the dart of wickedness and stick it into that offense. Matthew 8 and 10, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to, uh, to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so, uh, so great a faith, no, not in Israel. See, submission is the highest form of obedience. But offense is the quickest way to lose. Come on, the quickest way to lose. The miracle. Am I Okay. If we, if we, if we can somehow break beyond where we are. Many, 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 many years, many years ago, I probably had the Holy Ghost probably two years. 
got hurt. I got gutted spiritually by somebody that I trusted very, very well. And I told my wife, I said, if this is what church is about, honey, you can have it. I'm done. That's it. I'm done. Forget it. I would get down to pray. Nothing. Finally, one day, he said, when are you going to give this to me? And I said, what, God? He said, don't play games with me. Except you give me this thing that has offended you, I will not talk to you no more. That's a wake-up call. There are some of us in here, we, are car- we have carried things from our childhood, and yet we have run them through our minds and run them through our minds, and yet we, and yet we think that we got that thing conquered. It's not conquered because it's not under the blood. It's still in your hand. And until we put it under the blood, it'll never be in his hand. When I can open my heart and expose myself and make myself vulnerable and say, Lord, here am I. What do I have to do for you to send me? Husbands and wives, I'm going to tell you something. You be married long enough, you're going to say something to one another that is going to hurt one another. Am I telling you the truth, Elder? Come on, come on. Hello, it's going to hurt deep. But you love one another enough to forgive the offense. Matthew 15 and 22. And behold, a woman of Cana came out of the coast saying and cried unto him saying have mercy on me O Lord thou son of David my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil but he answered her not a word and his disciples came and besought him saying send her away for she crieth after us but he answered and said I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel then came she and worshipped him saying Lord help me But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs, which was an offensive statement. So in other words, he called her a dog. He called her a dog. But the next verse, and she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Why? I'm not going to let an offensive word keep my child from getting a miracle. I'm not going to let some offensive keep me out of the presence of the Lord. Come on, I've got to worship him regardless. I don't care what I've been to. I don't care what i got to give up. Why? I want to get him. She worshiped. She worshiped. Come on, she worshiped. She worshiped. John 6 and verse 60, many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying, who can bear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured against it, he said unto them, does this offend you? From that time, many of his disciples didn't walk with him anymore. Why? One word. One word. Could it be that God is allowing that one word, that one thing to grind in your spirit to uh, to see whether that he can trust you with something greater? Could it be that God is allowing that one thing in your life so that you would expose your heart and say, Lord, I bear all. Here it is, God. You you deal with it, Lord. I am laying it down. I don't care what I've got to do, Lord. If I've got to go wash their feet, I'm going to go wash their feet. When 
when we become offended. We become like the man who, who was praying, beat his chest. I'm glad I'm not like that one. Matthew 16 and 8, when, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, Oh, ye little faith, why reason you among yourselves? Because you have brought no bread. Reason begins to cause doubt. When he's calling us out, come on, we can't reason among ourselves. We got to step beyond the reason. We just got to take a step. When my wife get uh, when my wife gets back, I won't spoil it. You just ask her about the refrigerator. Whenever she gets back here, I want you to ask her about the refrigerator. Twenty years ago, three kids, a wife, in an old beat-up van. We packed everything in it that we could pack in it and head it out because we had a vision from the Lord. We had a word that was a mandate, and it was go. Has there been many heartaches? Yes. Has there been many upsets? Yes. Has, has there been many times that uh, that uh, that you wanted to go home and get a job? Yes. But I couldn't. Come on, but I couldn't let go of, of the word that said go. Genesis 22 and 17. That in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. You will never possess the gate of your adversary carrying an offense. He will always possess the gate. Matthew 11 and 6. Blessed is he whomsoever shall not be offended in me. You know why? Jesus can say some hard stuff. He'll say some stuff that'll just really get, get next to you. He'll make you uncomfortable. He'll make you sweat whenever, when everybody else is freezing. when I get offended. You know why some quit the ministry? Because they get offended. Well, God called me to preach. Well, what, what, what's wrong? Could it be that's the reason why some children are carrying such a bitterness and an offense because daddy. See, it ain't my wife's job to go. It's my job to go. It's her job to follow. That's it. Isaiah 53 and 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet would he esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. There's healing in the blood. Come on, there's healing in the blood. James 4 and 7, submit yourselves there, uh, therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And there is a word that is called barak, and it's an act of kneeling. Barak then is an express, an attitude of love, submission to all my concerns, trusting that he will work out all things for my good. Someone to come on to the music. If I get offended at the things of God, I've got to ask myself, what part of this law do I not love? I love this law enough to tell you the truth. 
See, you may have never had an angel that stood before you one night going, hey, you know, I can kill you right now. Why didn't you obey my voice? That's a different world. Come on, that's a different world. In 1 Peter 5 and verse 6 and 7, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him for he careth for you. What are you offended at? Offense will cause us to wonder and not take the promise. Offense will cause us to say things and do and do things because we want control. But when I can come to an old-fashioned altar, you're not going to control this. You want to go deeper in God? Come on, you got to pull back the curtain of your heart. You got to pull, pull it back. God, this is what I'm dealing with right here. God, I don't, Lord, I don't know why things are thus and thus and thus. Could it be that God's waiting on you to expose your heart? Here am I. Here am I. Well, I got hurt by mama. I got hurt by daddy. I got hurt by husband, by, by an ex-husband. I'm going to tell you something. Is their words going to keep you out of the presence of the Lord? Is, there, is their words going to put you in a place to where that you're going to miss God? No matter what's happened in life, No matter what's going on right now. But here is an altar that I can come and expose myself. Here I am, God. This altar is open. Come on, will you come? Come on, will you come? God, I don't want no offense. I don't want a broken covenant, God. I don't want, I don't want something broken in my life, God, to where that I cannot obey your voice. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Here is how you change your situation. Here is how you change it. Come on, you come unto repentance. This is how you change it. God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. God, will you help me? God, I can't do this alone. Holiness is not a bad word. Holiness is a word of separation that says, I need God. In order for him to be a father to me, I've got to separate my, myself. Some of us here, we are bearing the scars of our past. Come on, but if you'll open up your heart and let God begin to touch you, no matter what's happened in your life, no matter what's took place, I know what God that is ready to heal you this morning. All you got to do is, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry, God. I let this situation get, get the best of me. I was afraid, God. I, I, Lord, I... I've got to step to that place in you. But God, I was afraid. God's greater than our fear. He's greater than our fear. Come on, let's pray.
kid one of the toughest things that you will have to overcome is not holding people accountable for how they treat your parents and I'm reminded of the words of Jesus father forgive them for they know not what they do and it took me a long time to realize they're lashing out not not that there's something wrong with the person that they're lashing out at but there's something wrong with them and God is actually showing you how to love them when they lash out God is showing you how to pray for them when they were stoning Stephen he prayed the same prayer forgive them I've stood in the church nobody knew I was there heard families yell at my dad men cuss my dad in his office they didn't know all the hours he spent praying for them as a son that made me want to go in the office lock the door and beat him to death but Jesus said if you salute those who salute you don't the publicans and the sinners do the same? The greatest opportunity of the church is to love a world that don't love you back. There was a lady one day. I was standing in my dad's office. Nobody knew I was there. Brother John, she was letting him have it. She was the Sunday school superintendent, and he did something she didn't like. And man, she was working him over, screaming at him, yelling at him. And I'm just sitting there being like, Dad, why are you taking this? Kick her out of the church. That's what your natural flesh wants to do. It's not what we do. But he just kindly said, I know but I'm the pastor. Well, this and that and this and that, I understand. But trust me, I'm the pastor. Later in her life, 
an unexplained sickness came upon her. I'm not saying it was because of that, but I'm just saying God has a way of getting your attention to make you apologize. And I talked to her. She said, Brandon, I'm scared. She would get up in front of the church. Please, if there's anybody, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. That's the mercy of God. But I, I want to tell you today, as the pastor, first off, there's no position in this church that's owned by anybody. I just want to say that. We're all volunteers here. And your greatest opportunity in the church is to train somebody else to take your position one day. Because we want this thing to live on past us. But have y'all seen at the fair those little games where you shoot the water gun and you shoot it in the little hole in the little horse? You hit that hole into a little bitty hole and that horse goes fast, you know? There's times I struggle, but I'm looking, and some of y'all, when y'all start missing the mark, you start slowing down. And I, I've only been here two years, and Brother Kite knows what I'm talking about, but some of the emotions that I deal with, sometimes I get angry because I want you to do so good. And it's like they know. Why aren't they doing good? And this past week, God God impressed on me. He said, when I send a test to my people and they start failing the test, he said, I'm exposing to you what's wrong with them. And you know what I do with that information? God teaches me how to pray for you. The doctor don't get mad at you because you have a health problem. He does a test, he figures out what's wrong with you, and then he prescribes the right medicine. Do you know, if my brother has something wrong with him, I do not respond to that with anger and being rude or being mean. You know what I do? I pray for him, and I love him. And so, whenever some of you that know to do right, and you start slipping... I go to my office and I say, God, I'm asking you to help this person. God, this is what you know they're struggling with. This is what you know. Number one, thank you for revealing to me what's wrong. And there's things that God has revealed to people about me because I'm not perfect either. But that information is for us to help, not hurt. And if we're not careful and if we get in our feelings, and if and let me say this. I'm not trying to preach every time I get up here, okay? We got a great preacher for this season. But if I have to tiptoe around you, there's something wrong with your spirit. If I feel like, well, I'm, I, could somebody else might, or maybe this, and I'm scared to say that, or I'm like, man, I don't. It's nothing personal in the kingdom of God, it's about the advancement of the kingdom. And so many times we have a brother or sister that lashes out or says the wrong thing. And it's just so easy to get in our feelings and be like, they shouldn't have said that. I'm mad. Okay. They're exposing what's wrong with them. You have the medicine to fix them. Are you going to give them the antibiotic? Are you going to send them home to die? Are you going to give them the medicine or are you going to send them home to die? Can I tell you today, God has called every one of us on here to love one another, support one another, and to pray for one another. If Brother Esau gets in my face and says, Pastor, I can't stand you, I can't stand your preaching, I still don't have a license to tell him to get away, don't ever talk to me again. In my prayer time, I still got to say, God, I'm asking you to bless this man. I'm asking you to help this man with whatever the issue is in his spirit, God. If there's a way I can restore him, if there's a way I can get through to him, God, I'm asking you to bless his family. Not, God, I'm asking you to curse their family. God, I'm asking you to do something with them. No. Yes. 
If you're going to be successful in the kingdom of God, you cannot get in your feelings. When I got to Bible college, I thought I was the best drummer there. Turns out I was the worst. If somebody can do something better for you in the kingdom, that's not a license to get intimidated and try to kill them. We need second team, second teams too. There's a starting quarterback and there's a backup. Right now in the league, backup's pretty valuable. Can I tell you, whatever position you play, you're valuable. If right now during this season, you just come and sit on a pew and worship and clap your hands and amen the preacher, don't feel like you're not doing anything. I said, don't feel like you are not a part just because you're not teaching in the Sunday school or singing on the platform. The greatest part is when I get to walk in here with my brothers and sisters and pray together before prayer and help them lift their hands. And if you've done something to hurt me, I forgive you. And don't talk about my mama. I'm just picking. You know, some people... And, and I got to say this with love. They're not offended because somebody hadn't offended them yet. I don't want to be that person. Hey, can I tell you, whenever people come in here off the streets, new car, they're going to have things about them. They're going to have ways about them. If you can't love them past how they treat you, we will never see them get to their fulfillment. You got to love people past how they treat you, good or bad. And that's something that we have to work on. If somebody talks about you, that means you're doing something right. Keep on living for God. If they talk about you and you get mad and shoot darts at their house, come on, you just reset the time clock. I'm expected to be hated because Jesus said they hated me. They're for sure going to hate you. So when we're hated, we'd be like, God, thank you. I'm doing what's right. Amen. I love you today. Brother Rankin, I wish you'd be more positive. Me too. I blame it on my dad. I'm picking. I got a good dad. But there's things. And this is the last thing I'm going to say and I'm done. Parents, don't be the reason that your children hate Pentecost. Now, if you're standing for truth, you stand for truth. But if you talk about them behind closed doors, those babies hear you. And you can't love them in public when you talk about them at your home. Because guess who hears all? Jesus Christ. And I say, God, if there's anything in my spirit, if I have anything against anybody, forgive me. Because when I come to an altar, when I mess up, I'm going to need the Father's forgiveness. And he said, if you don't forgive your brother, I'm not going to forgive you. And I want to thank you today, God, for this word. I come against every spirit of offense. God, if there's people in this congregation or watching online or marriages that are holding things against one another... I pray, God, that you would break it today. That you would let us pass that place of offense and we would get to that love, God, where you can work and unify us in our marriages and in our homes and in this church, God. I want to thank you today, God. And I love you today for giving us this word. Hallelujah. Let's one more time give him a good hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Brother Phillips. I'm telling you, I've enjoyed Brother and Sister Phillips. My, my. And I still don't feel no end date, so we're going to continue on. And uh, we're just going to continue to wreak havoc on the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. No church tonight. Amen. So we want to give you time to enjoy your families. We just said this a few days ago at the end of last month. Thank you, Brother Steinhauer, for doing the men's prayer yesterday morning. I've heard from several men you did a great job, brother. So, amen. God bless you. We'll see you back Wednesday night. Let's remember Ladies Bible Studies Tuesday at 10. Amen. We love you.
We love you. This is a place and a house of love and prayer. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. We'll see you back this week.